Let us pray. Lord, you've showed us so much love, so much mercy. And we come because of your love that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross that we might live again, that the life we live might be help others find Jesus Christ. And again, Lord, you've just again blessed us so much. We have so much in our lives. And Lord, we want to just confess that we have sin. But we know that your forgiveness and your mercy is everlasting. And again, Lord, look today. Even though it's a little dreary outside, we know your love is shining in each heart today. And touch each life that's here, that they may come to a closer walk with you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today we're in John, the fifth chapter. Jesus asks us a question today. Will you be made whole? What is our real quest in life? Are we seeking to be made spiritually whole for heavenly pleasures as often as we ask to be made physically whole for earthly pleasures? Every time we ask, well, Lord, you've got to heal my arm, my body, my leg, my knee, ask for spiritual wholeness at the same time. Can we throughout the day just stop and say, Lord, be with us, and make us spiritually whole. Most people don't even know why they go to church. It's to hear the word of the Lord and follow it. We have churches around the community fussing and fighting because everybody wants to control the church. It's not their church, it's God's church. And usually it ends up in the hands of somebody who's following their principles that they learned out in the world. And so it follows in the wrong hands and it causes all kinds of trouble. So all you need to know about church is you come, listen to the word, go out and live it. Jesus tells us that many know the scriptures but not obeying them. We let the world tell us this is alright, that's alright. It is not alright if the scriptures tell us it's wrong. Doesn't mean they can't be forgiven. That doesn't mean they're not going to heaven. It means that they have to accept Jesus Christ and they have to confess their sins. So let us follow the scriptures that I've asked you to memorize a hundred thousand times. That might be a slight exaggeration. But uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not in thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. So before we do anything, each and every day, we must ask God to bless it and to guide it. And John tells us, I've written all these scriptures so you'll know the truth. John 20, 31, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. What a difference this will make in our life. We will not be the outward show that a lot of people like to have. But the inward kind that the heart talks about in 1 Peter, 3rd chapter, says, Who's adorning? Let it not be the outward adorning of plating the hair, wearing of gold, or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Then we're doing that, we let us walk in peace and comfort, being made whole by the blood Lamb. of the Lamb. Today, John teaches us that believing the Scriptures, that's how we're made whole. The Scriptures witness that Jesus is doing the work of God. Jesus says, I don't do anything unless God directs me. That's the way we need to be doing. And then, he says, I don't seek human honor but the honor that comes from God by doing God's word. And Moses' words condemned the unbeliever. They thought Moses was the greatest thing since sliced bread. But he says, the man that you love and honor, his words are going to condemn you in heaven. Where should our favorite place be to go on Sunday? Church. Church. Okay, did anybody get that wrong? <laughs> well, that's the way Jesus was. When he was out, he always went to the church on Sunday, and we find him in Jerusalem. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. God has attached a lot of importance to 
the roll of Jerusalem. And most Jews returned there for the feast. Many times Jesus celebrated the Passover. But God is more interested in the spirit of the worship from the heart, not the place, not the rituals, but that we go to learn and follow the scriptures. You know, it's that old dead horse I keep beating. He might get up and walk someday. But you've got to learn the scriptures and got to follow them. And again, most people don't know why they go to church. It is to learn and follow the, the word and everything they do. Do we have a problem we haven't turned over to God? You've got some problem, don't have to raise your hand, but think about it in your mind. Have I got a problem I haven't turned over to God? Well, God is looking to solve our problems to help us. There's a man that's been sick for 38 years, can't even get out of his bed. And we find that happening here. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew they had been there for a long time, in that case he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? He's asking that question of us today. Wilt thou be made whole? Many people do not recognize that they're sick with sin. Jesus can make us spiritually whole. And we're going to find this man is just like the woman at the well. He's thinking earthly instead of heavenly. And so we're going to understand by his answer that that's the way he feels. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step down before me. Well, what is Jesus trying to get the man to focus on? Him. On him. Not the water. So that's what we do. Sometimes we think, well, if I take this pill, I'll be better. But we need to focus on God and say, Lord, you blessed us to be taken of this pill. You blessed me of what I'm doing. Well, Jesus says unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately this man was made whole. Took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. What does Jesus show us there? That every day is a good day to do something good. Just not necessarily have to, can't do it on Saturday and Sunday because it's Sabbath. Jesus says if it needs to be done, you do it for them. And Jesus gives us many commands in the Bible that are good for us. And make a difference in our life if we can find them and follow them. Many promises of the Bible are there for the taking. But the Jews were more for outward show. We find that one of their man-made rules is going to be broken. And they're all upset. <coughs> they don't care about this man. They care about he's doing something that they say he should not do. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Again, they count not for the man, but for the little rules. It matters more what we get, that we give our hearts to God than not to think about the rituals. You know, some churches are so proud of this, that, and the other, but the whole purpose is to come and hear the word of God and go out and follow it. Many religions require more for the scriptures, more than the scriptures. Man was made for the Sabbath, and Sabbath was made for the man. <coughs> Jesus says you put on more burdens, not required for God. Well, the Jews began to seek him. You know, they wanted to find him. You think they wanted to serve him? Not learn more about him? No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> then asked they him, What man is that which saith unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that healed wist not who it was, 
For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon thee. Now, when God heals us, he, uh, for our physical being, he knows there's something else that needs to be healed. And what is that? Our hearts. Our hearts, our spiritual life. All of these things need to be healed. And so he goes back to this man and says, wait a minute, I'm not done with you yet. I made it so you can walk, but now I want you to walk in the scriptures and do the things that God wants us to do. Well, he said, what could possibly be worse than being 38 years laid in the bed? <coughs> what could possibly be worse than... Oh, you're losing your salvation. <laughs> yeah. Eternity in hell. That's a lot worse than laying in that bed for 38 years. Well, the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Many horrible things are being done and have been done in the name of religion. Islam kills Christians. Islam kills all kinds of people. They shot the little girl in the head and asked to be educated. So, but the cults can do something even worse. What is that? They can take them away from Jesus and kill our soul. So people, if you're going out, we never know when our time has come. You know, the thing about the young people, they need to know Jesus Christ as their Savior just as adults do. Because we found 17 or so got killed. The fact that they got killed was bad enough, but if they didn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, that makes it worse. Well, if Jesus works for God, who should we work for? God. The Bible teaches us that to do all things as unto the Lord. The Lord. Here we find that Jesus only did the works of God. Only now. You might think, well, he just wandered around from time to time, but he was only doing what God wanted him to do. And Jesus told them that. But Jesus answered them, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. That if he used God's instructions, who else needs to use them? We do. We do. We do. And... We pray for God's guidance because we really want to do what God wants us to do. That's what our life is all about. Trying to do what God wants us to do. Well, there's a couple of commands that Jesus gave us that's a good starting point in each and every day. You know what those two commands were? your heart. Yeah. Love your neighbors as you say. Love your neighbors you say. Praise the Lord. If we start out to do something, am I doing it as unto God? And am I going to irritate my neighbor? Am I going to help him or not? These are the things that we keep in mind. And then he says, all the things that have been written point to these two things. Well, the Jews found out that he thought he was equal to God. And so then they were going to bow down and worship him, right? No, I'm afraid not. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making him equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For whatsoever things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Our prayer and aim should be, we do not want to do anything except the Father, what the Father tells us. Well, we can only do these heavenly things through what kind of power? The Holy, Ghost. Holy Spirit. He is the only one that can reach down and help us. Our hearts have to be open to the power of the Holy Spirit, and the power of the Holy Spirit will give us scripture to remind us. Through prayer... The Holy Spirit comes and helps us. Are we learning to pray? Are we learning to pray without ceasing? The things we do every day, and this that old dead horse, I'm kicking him this time, but you got to know that you have to pray about everything. Now I know that's hard to remember. 
That's uh, Christianity 101. Pray about everything. And Jesus said the Father showed him all things to do. Well, how does he show us all things to do? By the Bible. By the Bible, absolutely. And that's the way God shows love is through the Scriptures. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. And what is the greatest work that Jesus Christ did? Died on the cross. He died on the cross. He says, you will be amazed. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. That means to be brought alive. You know, there are a lot of dead men walking out there. They think they're alive, but they're not alive until they know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And that's what he's saying. That the word of God and accepting Jesus Christ will bring us alive. That's what quickness means. It is God that raised up Jesus and gave him new life. So will Jesus, through his death on the cross and our acceptance, also give us new life. How do we give honor to God and Jesus? For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, <coughs> that all men should honor the Son. Even as they honor the Father, <coughs> he that honors not the Son honors not the Father, which has sent him. We honor him with the same faith, love, and fear, and worship that is due and payable to God the Father. And how do we show love to Jesus? Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Praise the Lord. Jesus has good news to those that have obeyed the Scriptures and accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now we know in 1 uh, Corinthians 3.15, I believe it is, anyway, it's in Corinthians 3.15, it says, Those that believe in Jesus even though everything they've done wrong in their life, they will go into heaven, but they will not have all the rewards that they might think they're going to get, but they will go into heaven. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Everlasting life through Jesus is what we're looking for. Well, Jesus says something rather unusual. My sheep shall hear my voice. And he says, even the people out in the graveyard are going to hear it. Man, they're going to bust it up through all them uh, vaults. They're not going to stop them at all. There's a lot of vaults out there. In the olden days, they didn't put all those vaults, so they're going to have a hard time getting out. But he says, even the day, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Through Jesus' death, we will have life. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he's the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Even the evil and the good alike, they're going to hear it. And shall come forth, they that have done good, which has accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, under the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil, which has reject Christ, unto the resurrection of the damnation. Marvel not. For the day is coming on Jesus' command that the graves will be emptied, and all will rise to eternal life, eternal death. If we know Jesus as our Savior, it will be to eternal life. Well, as Jesus did the will of God, we should also. And he says, I can of mine own self do nothing as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. We will be judged based on our faith in Jesus Christ. What a great prayer that would be, Lord let me not seek my own will. And then in the, uh, the prayer it says, Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. 
earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. That's our prayer. In my life, I want God's will to be done. In the olden days, they had to have two witnesses for if they could be accepted as true. And Jesus tells us that I have many witnesses, but he's going to mention three here. One is John the Baptist. The other are the miracles. And the other is the scriptures. And he talks about John. If I bear witness on myself and my witness is not true. He says, if I'm the only one that's given witness that it's not true. But there is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true. You sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I received not testimony from man, but these things I say that you might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his life. Then he said, also I have miracles that you've seen. That I, but I have a greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me. Well, Nicodemus recognized that he was a man from God in uh, John 3, 2. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. God has borne witness of me. Are we listening to the witnesses that God gives us in the scriptures? And the Father himself which has sent me has borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. So this is the problem with you Pharisees and scribes. You've not heard, you've not listened, you're not paying attention to what I'm saying or to the Bible. And you have not his word abiding in you. For whom he has sent him, ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify me. He said, if you read the scriptures, you'll come to the conclusion that I am Jesus the Christ. And you will not come to me that you might have life. They were not listening to the scriptures. I pray that we're listening to the scriptures. Let us not fail to heed the scriptures. Because we have even more than they did. And Jesus tells us, I do not receive honor from people, but I honor comes from God. He says in the 41st verse, I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How does God know that the love of God is in us? He knows our hearts. He can see our heart. We can't hide a thing. We can't go get out in the wood and hide in the, tree, in the trees or go up on hanging rock and get under one of them caves. He knows our hearts. But he says, false prophets come and millions believe. False religions are out there and people are unsaved by the billions. Not millions, billions. And then he says when the Antichrist comes, even more are going to be faked out. So, you don't want to give up your place of honor, so he's telling them. You, you guys love people when they come out and they see you in those robes and you're praying on the corner. Oh, how religious you are. And you're so wonderful. You know, um, I don't want to take anything away from Billy Graham, but he's just a human. <laughs> People are making him a saint. But, you know, he said, dear friends, the saint was my wife. She raised five kids by herself, and I'm out galloping all over the country. So let's not give honor to anybody but to God. How can you believe when you receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? When man bestows honor on man, it's kind of hard to be humble, isn't it? Somebody comes around and brags on you, and oh boy, you're the greatest, and all that stuff. Uh, my son preached on humility the other day, and I thought one of the really best examples of humility was Muhammad Ali. He says, I am the greatest. And then he turns around and says, I confess my shortcomings. 
I don't know how great I am. <laughs> they have these actors and actresses. They gave him fame and money and everybody's clapping and cheering and going on. Oh, your movie was so good. You did this, you did that. Loved your dress and so on. But most of them don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Isn't that something? Most of them deny Jesus. I was so proud of the football team that won it one my team, but when they got them up there and said, you know, this was a great win. And the guy says, oh yes, thank you God. Thank you Jesus. <coughs> and all Players after players said the same thing. The most valuable player said, thank you to God. And come to find out they've been having prayer meetings. They even baptized one in a hotel pool. They had prayer meetings. They're speaking about God. They, they loved Moses. The Jewish people loved Moses. I mean, he's their main man. Well, he says, you know what? Moses is going to condemn you with his words. So let us now have the problems that the scribes and Pharisees have of not listening to the scriptures because we have infinitely more in view. Do you think that I will accuse you to the Father? There is one that accuses you, even Moses, and do me trust. Well, what were the words that Moses gave them that's going to condemn them? Commandments. It's called Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. If you read Deuteronomy, it tells you about every sin you should do or shouldn't do. But he says, Had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? You know, if they were confounded by Jesus and Moses' words, they should have gone back and got the Bible out and reviewed it. That would help them believe. And then they too could begin their journey. The everlasting life. John tells us, believe in the scriptures, that thou art made whole. We want to be spiritually whole. Pray for that throughout the week. The scriptures witness that Jesus is doing the work of God. If Jesus is doing the work of God, then we too should be doing the work of God. The scriptures confirm that Jesus is God's Son and that they are one. Do not seek human honor, but the honor that comes from God. We always love, want to be the star of attention, be uh, everybody say something nice and brag on us, and it's human nature. But he says, that's not the honor you're looking for. I'm looking for the honor that Jesus Christ gives through his death on the cross. And then Moses' words condemned the scribes and the Pharisees. They were experts in Scripture. It's amazing how they got off the beaten path. But if you go to different churches today, you know they're off the beaten path. They call themselves churches, but they're not true churches because they don't worship God like they should. But so Moses' words will condemn us we don't know Jesus Christ our Savior.